And with me is Stephanie Ho, the president of the North End Waterfront Residents Association. And we're here to welcome you all tonight. We're so glad to see so many people came out for this wonderful presentation by the students from Northeastern University. Um, we're not going to get into much detail about the students and their project because they're going to do that. They have their professor here with them. But we just wanted to welcome you all here and we wanted to acknowledge that we have with us at South Latina and our state representative, Aaron Michaelowitz and the Commissioner of Transportation, uh, Thomas Tibblett. Um, are there any other officials here? Jay, Jay Walsh. Jay, and, oh, sorry, Jay, Jay Walsh from Neighborhood Services. So we want to welcome you all for what should be a very oh, interesting yeah. evening. Yeah. Stu from Concert Fields from his office. Well. Anybody that we missed? Okay, well, it's great to see so many of you here. Um, you might want to wait for the there's still some seats in the back. Hey, hold the water. While people are taking their seats, we just want to remind everybody that uh, this is an open public meeting. Matt Conti is taping this so that everybody in the community is going to be able to hear and see what's presented tonight. Uh, we'll let the students present, and then at some point they will be accepting your questions and comments, so just be aware that you're on video for the neighborhood. Uh, I think we also have yeah. Phil is here from the press, from the Regional Review. Are there any other members of the press here tonight? Everyone, just to clarify, this is a presentation by students as part of their senior project. They're going to get into that. Uh, they are going to be giving some of their ideas as a result of their studies for their project, and then we'll have a question and answer uh, period where you can ask the students questions. They're looking for your feedback. This is going to be very helpful to them, but they welcome all your comments and your suggestions. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, Matt Walsh, who's one of the um, presenters. He's the, the head of the team, of the uh, engineering team, Capstone Project from Northeastern University. Thank you, Don. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to first introduce, my name is Matt Walsh. I'm a senior civil engineering student at Northeastern University. Um, and I'm here with my team. Uh, for the sake of academic purposes, our team is named Central Engineering. Um, Oliver Nowalski here tonight. Uh, Matthew Ford over there. We have Rodrigo Alonzo, Stephen Lieber, uh, and Steve Curtin. And we're also here tonight with our professor who's briefly going to introduce uh, and give you guys some background on our project, uh, Dr. Daniel Zelaski. Uh, and thank you, Professor. Thanks, Thanks Matt. So good evening, and uh, this is great to see. I was down in Martha's Vineyard yesterday and had about uh, six people in the audience. So to see 60 plus here tonight is wonderful. My name is Daniel Delasky, and I've been a faculty at uh, Northeastern University since 2009. And during the, uh, during the spring semester, my responsibility is to take the students on a capstone project. Okay, so students spend five years typically at Northeastern's campus. They do a year and a half co-op, and the, the remainder of the time is spent in the classroom. And so their capstone project is basically a culmination of their uh, four and a half years of work as well as their cooperative experience. And so when they get to their senior year, they have to pick basically one of three disciplines in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. They either pick the environmental track, the structural track, or the transportation track. So this semester I have 26 students with, uh, working with me, and they're set up basically into small consulting firms. I have five teams working on five different projects throughout Massachusetts. As I mentioned, we were down in Martha's Vineyard yesterday presenting to the town of Edgertown. We were in Blackstone, Mass. last week, presenting to the town for uh, a Main Street redesign. We're here tonight in Boston. Uh, we also have a project down in Milton, East Milton Square, and along uh, Quincy Shore Drive down in Quincy, Mass. For the last, uh, so for the last four years, since 2009, I've been doing at least one project in the city of Boston. Last year, we did the uh, Broadway over in South East. We looked at redesigning that street. We came up with a number of ideas, presented them, them to the, uh, the transportation department, and the transportation department can do what they want with them. Okay. They're sitting on their table. The same thing holds true tonight. At the beginning of the semester, I said to the students, you know what, there's been a lot of talk in the North End about a pedestrian mall, about one-way streets, and about other ideas. The transportation students, they've studied it now for close to five years. I said, why don't you come up with some ideas for the North End, things that could be done differently. Okay, so what you're going to see tonight are ideas. Okay, nothing is set in stone. It's nothing, it's not a proposal. It's not a formal proposal. These are ideas that the students came up with as part of this small consulting firm to say, hey, things that could be done differently, things that they're doing in other parts of the country and other parts of the world that might work well in the North End, depending on your, obviously, your, your desire. All right, so what I'm gonna do is turn it over to them. You're gonna hear from them for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then we'll open it up to questions uh, shortly thereafter. 
All right. Thank you for your time. Um, so as I said, my name is Matt Walsh, Project Manager of Essential Engineering. We've been tasked this semester with um, the uh, Hanover Street project, and we've titled it the Hanover Street Redesign for our purposes um, in terms of looking at a variety of issues uh, or opportunities for improvement that we see uh, along the street corridor here in the north end uh, and coming up with brainstorming a list of proposals and also looking at uh, some of the proposals that have been introduced in the past here in the north end and uh, developing our own iterations for those. <coughs> Getting into the project scope, our academic project scope defined here as you can see a map of Boston. We've noted Northeastern on there, um, East Boston, Cambridge, and obviously the North End. Taking a look there uh, from Google Earth, we can see we've highlighted our project scope here in the North End. We'll be working from bounded, uh, along Hanover Street, bounded from Cross Street to Commercial Street, uh, and our side streets that are included in our scope are Salem Street, uh, the Richmond, Richmond Park Mentor Cross Street, Prince, and North Bennett. So everybody has an idea of moving forward what our scope was uh, to look at. So at the onset of the project, we take a list of uh, opportunities for improvement that we've either, uh, you know, that have been brought up in the past or that we've discovered in our uh, studies here in the street. Uh, and we integrate them into our project design goals. And I'm going to present to you here uh, what we've come up with in terms of uh, these main objectives. First of all, our project is a pedestrian, uh, pedestrian focused project. As you can see here, we'd like to adapt to seasonal demands, so the increase in pedestrian traffic that you see in the North End. I mean, here, uh, our project took place in the winter months. The academic calendar is January through May. Uh, and but we realized that on Hanover, Hanover Street really does change in the summer months with that influx of pedestrians. You can see right outside Mike's Pastries here, uh, plenty of people lining up uh, for a cannoli. And on the right side, in the winter months, a little bit quieter. Taking a look at the sidewalk widths, we talked about that pedestrian focus. Um, really, one of our main goals is pedestrian comfort on uh, the Hanover Street corridor. As you can see here, this is Matt and Steve. Um, and they're standing in a zone that's been uh, inhibited by refuse containers, uh, potted trees and plants, and really diminished what we as engineers refer to as the effective width of the sidewalk. Now, to give you an idea, effective width is actually the width of sidewalk that pedestrians are comfortable walking in. So, uh, for example, if Oliver here is the wall of the building, I'm comfortable walking about six inches to a foot off of Oliver. I'm not gonna walk right up against him. So if you bring uh, refuse containers and, and potted plants in there, that's going to shrink it even more. This is a, pit, a point right there where it's about three feet of effective width of the sidewalk. Now, we, we list our potential as well, um, where we see a nice wide sidewalk with none of those uh, objects inhibiting that effective width that we talked about. Moving down on pedestrian, uh, pedestrian focused approach, recognizability and pedestrian safety. Safety is a number one concern uh, in all aspects of engineering, but primarily for us, pedestrian safety in transportation engineering is, uh, is key. And as you can see here, this is a crosswalk uh, along Salem that is uh, faded out, difficult to see from both the motorist and pedestrian perspective. And as well, uh, on this side here, as you approach the curb and cross the street and get to the other side, it's what we refer to as ADA non-compliant, Americans with Disabilities Act non-compliant because it does not have a handicap accessible ramp. As you can see over here, a potential, uh, a very bright, uh, brightly colored, identified crosswalk system with a nice handicap ramp on the other side of the street. Can everybody see in the back? All set? Continuing on, on with product design goals, um, in, in terms of recognizability, commercial and residential parking, uh, parking is a, is a big thing here in the North End. And as you can see, some of the signs, signage in the North End is very difficult to see. It's difficult to, to uh, really understand who's supposed to par park where. And uh, this is a, a shot here that you can see <coughs> from a walking perspective or from a car's perspective. Small sign up there, highlighted in red, blown up here. There's a bunch of different uh, suggestions of handicapped parking, two hour um, resident parking, tow zone, I mean really uh, when, it's, when it's snowing there's different uh, parking and then up at the right you can really see what we're looking for. We're really looking to clear it up. A couple of signs that get the point across that are very visible to users 
um, and that really improve use for all users in the North End. Moving down, those double park delivery vehicles that you see, uh, we've been down to the North End just in the last two months, probably 15 times, um, and every single time I can count several uh, double park delivery vehicles that are inhibiting traffic flow. And as you only have that narrow two-way uh, facility at the center of the street, when one commercial vehicle double parks, that leaves only one lane for two directions of traffic to flow through, essentially bottlenecking it and turning it into a one-way <laughs> facility for that short amount of time. Uh, as you can see over there, we'll get into our design a little later, but that's a segregated commercial zone um, in which we've standardized it uh, that uh, commercial vehicles such as those vans pictured can park in uh, designated areas for themselves. Accommodating all users, on top of the vehicles, um, residential vehicles and commercial vehicles, oh, um, residential vehicles and commercial vehicles also like to accommodate bicycles, uh, cyclists. We, we notice here that the existing conditions um, aren't exactly welcoming the bikes, bicycles to park uh, along the street here. We have a couple of U bicycle racks that are made for one or two bicycles. Uh, and, or if you can't find one of those, you can always uh, attach it to a tree or a lamppost or um, a fence or any of that. Potential, a couple of bike racks there on the right. A simple module like that can accommodate 10 bicycles. And uh, lastly and most importantly, our focus on pedestrians. Uh, not only do we have that distinguishment from the winter and the summer months, that, that large influx in the summer that we talked about, but just when you look at the narrow facility of Hanover Street, we have uh, some substantial changes from one end to another that we've studied in depth this semester. This was a particular pedestrian study on February 23rd. It was a Thursday evening from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, midwinter. Um, and really, to give you this, this picture is intended to, to get across the sheer volume of pedestrians that this facility um, experiences. This is 1,600 pedestrians per hour from Cross Street to Parmenter Street. That's uh, roughly one pedestrian every two seconds crossing at a particular point. That's a lot of pedestrians. Uh, moving up the street from Parmenter Richmond to North Bennett and Fleet, about 600, 620 pedestrians per hour. And then down in the last half of the street from North Bennett through to Commercial, only about 150 pedestrians. Uh, that being said, we focused our primary, our, our primary efforts are going to be focused on cross street to North Bennett, that first half of the street in terms of our pedestrian focused approach uh, right at the front of the street. Now I'm going to turn it over to Oliver Nowalski to talk to you uh, about design alternatives. Thank you, Matt. So before coming up with our own design and, and uh, our final design, we decided to do some research on the uh, an idea that had been proposed in the past to redesign Hanover Street. We came up with the idea of converting a, a section of Hanover Street into a pedestrian mall, which was proposed by, by Council of Messina in 2006. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the proposal. <laughs> and, and also the proposal last year to convert Hanover Street into a one way street. And then we came up with a, another alternative of having seasonal portable sidewalks. Um, Basically, we grabbed these three ideas that became our, our design alternatives, and we came up with a way, like we sat down as a group, analyzed the different maps of Hanover with all the direction of flow of, of traffic, and came up with feasible design alternatives for these three ideas. So we first studied the idea of impl implementing a pedestrian mall in Hanover. The pedestrian mall would be between Cross Street and North Bennett Street, is this red zone you can see here. And this black dots here will be automated bollards, which will impede uh, regular vehicles to turn into Hanover Street. These automated bollards will, still, will go down automatically for com commercial vehicles and emergency vehicles. So the, these types of vehicles will still have access to the restaurants or in case of an emergency in the area. To be able to, to, for this to be feasible, we had to change some of the direction of flow of several streets. These are the red arrows you can see here. The red arrows are streets where we had to change the direction of flow so that this, this design makes more sense in, from a tra uh, traffic, traffic um, engineering point of view. So pretty much what we did, like, but we created like a grid system between Salem and Commercial Street 
I would facilitate um, cars going, like looping, going in and around, and not congesting the area of, uh, of Hanover Street. The problem we saw with this design is that this sections here, where the, the cars are crossing Hanover Street, are going to be conflict zones. So if you guys could imagine crossing Faneuil Hall, which is a pedestrian mall, during the summer, with all of these pedestrians walking around, it's, it's pretty much going to be a bottleneck, and cars are going to be queuing up in there. And this is, in some areas, is going to be the the places where cars have to, uh, their only point of access towards the whole north end. So we decided that the pedestrian mall wasn't, even though it is a feasible project, feasible design, we decided it wasn't the prefer preferable design. We then went out and analyzed a one-way street. We decided that the vessel turner was going to be going south from Commercial Street to Cross Street. Again, excuse me, the red arrow symbolized the streets where we changed the direction of flow of vehicles. And again, we saw two alternatives. One was having a one-lane, one-way street. The other one was having a two-lane, one-way street. By having a one-lane, one-way street, we decided the problem was that this, since this is a commercial zone, we're always going to have cabs stopping, bringing visitors to restaurants. We're always going to have a delivery vehicle that will come and say, all right, it's a one minute. Um, they, they'll st stop for one minute, but, and as soon as they do that, they completely shut down the street. If it's a two lane, one way street, um, from our studies, uh, the amount of vehicles in the, uh, in the volume of vehicles in this area is not as high as it seems because uh, we, we, we believe that there's, well, we, yeah, it's not as much as, uh, as it seems. So if we, if we really uh, provide a, a two lane, one way street, we believe we're going to promote double parking, and if people double park, it's going to create a weaving effect around and creating more congestion in this area. Finally, we looked at the seasonal portable sidewalk, which was our preferred design and will be later explained by, by Matt Ford. And what's good about this design is it's going to change through the summer and the winter, and we're not changing the direction of flow of vehicles in any of the streets, as you will you'll learn. So now Matt Ford is going to talk to you about the preferred design. Thanks, Oliver. So as Matt and Oliver said, we studied the North End, we collected data, we came up with what we thought were uh, design alternatives that were feasible, and from that we developed our preferred design, which is the seasonal portable sidewalks. So first I'd like to talk to you about the focal point of the design, and that is the seasonal portable sidewalks. Now seasonal portable sidewalks are modular units that are brought in in the on-street parking spaces. So during the spring, summer, and fall, these, uh, these modular units are going to be implemented in the on-street parking spaces from Cross Street to North Bennett Street. It's going, to get, it's going to add seven feet of sidewalk width to both sides of the street in this section. On-street parking will be removed, but it's Can going to great... Can you just for one second? Yeah. You're going to take all this resident parking away from the residents? We actually... Yeah. No, okay. We actually have... Sit down. You don't even look at it. You don't even have a job. <laughs> So as I was saying, seasonal affordable sidewalks provide a mixed use for the space. Uh, we think we obviously realize that Hanover Street is a very congested area, and mixed use is going to be the key to finding a way to make it work. So during this, during the warmer months, we're going to be installing these um, affordable sidewalks in the street to increase the sidewalk width on both sides by seven feet. During the winter months, these portable sidewalks are going to be taken away, giving back the residents their parking and allowing for people to park closer to their homes. Uh, we feel a great advantage of this is that this design is adaptable because you have that mixed use. You have portable sidewalks in the summer, parking in the winter. The other great thing about this, is being that they're portable, is that there's, it can be done in phased implementation. So these units are about three feet long by six, in, six feet eight inches wide. So the advantage of this is you can start in as small as one space and try and see how these portable sidewalks work. We were thinking of trying one, one block just to see how it works. It's a smaller cost. You get to see how it works. And should it not work, it's very easy to take away and say, okay, that didn't work, let's look at something else for a very minimal cost. If we find that it does work, we can easily increase the implementation of this throughout the street as far as we see fit. 
<coughs> so looking at these pictures, the top pictures show how the portable sidewalks are put together. Uh, they're consisted of a plastic base which adjusts for the road, any elevations, any imperfections in the road. And then it's com also composed of a composite wood top. This provides a nice looking uh, surface as well as non-slip surface that is easily easy to walk on. Uh, they're very strong, very durable, and as you can see in these photos, they're currently being utilized in New York City as well as San Francisco, pictured here, where they're also being used in Louisville, Quebec City, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. So here we have a proposed rendering of what we envision Hanover Street to look like. Here you can see we have the Hanover Street cross sidewalks. We've expanded the sidewalks slightly and installed the on-street portable sidewalks in the parking spaces. Uh, as you can see here, it provides a lot more space for people to walk. It looks nice, it's appealing, and it's durable and going to be long-lasting. And as I mentioned, they can easily be taken on and off so that you get to try out and use that phase implementation to see how the idea would work before going into a full-scale implementation. So in addition to looking at portable seasonal sidewalks, we also had several other design ideas that we wanted to look at. Here we have a proposed rendering of the plan view of Hanover Street. We have Hanover Street going north to south and uh, Prince Street going east to west. As you can see in the picture, I'd like to direct your attention to the right side of the screen. These are the commercial zones that Matt had previously alluded to. We're looking at segregating commercial parking from the residential parking. So we want to make commercial zones much more identifiable, make it easy to recognize and easy to access for the delivery vehicles. So our approach allows these commercial zones to pull directly into the zone and they will also be segregated by, bulb, by street bulb outs. Uh, the advantage of the street bulb out is that it completely segregates the commercial zone from the residential parking so that nobody inhibits that zone so you don't get commercial vehicles wanting to double park. As you can see down here in the bottom right corner currently trucks are just using the street anywhere they can find. There are commercial zones designated but we found that they tend to just park anywhere because people aren't respecting the zones that they are allocated. In addition to the commercial zones, we feel that these commercial zones could also be utilized for valley parking. One of the big issues at night is that the valley parking is not recognizable. So we feel that by utilizing these segregated zones that are easily identifiable with white hatching, uh, visitors coming to the area are gonna be able to recognize, hey, this is a valet zone. This is the place that I can park my car, have the valet, and go to the restaurant. And we think that standardizing these zones is a huge it's going to be a huge benefit for the area and it really won't take away from any parking because right now the commercial zones as well as the valet parking is mixed use between resident, visitor, commercial valet, whatever it be, etc. So by implementing this, we're just segregating these zones completely so that everybody understands exactly what they are. Additionally in this picture, I'd like to draw your attention to the crosswalks. We're looking at, as Matt had pointed out, implementing a red, uh, excuse me, a stamped red asphalt, which is going to be colored in red. We have two examples of how these could look. Uh, the benefit of this is that they increase pedestrian safety. They're very visible to both the drivers and pedestrians, and they enhance the ambiance of the area. They're also longer lasting than your standard paint. Your standard paint is going to last for six months. These can last three to five years. There is an additional cost, but the benefit is well worth the extra expense. The uh, final, the final thing I'd like to point out is the street bulb outs you'll see here. So at the end of each block. We've uh, decided that we want to install street bulb outs. The advantage of the street bulb out is to increase pedestrian safety. By having the street bulb out go out seven feet into the street, you're reducing your pedestrian which is a crosswalk, which makes it safer for the pedestrians. You're also increasing their visibility for the drivers. So a driver driving down the street is gonna be able to easily recognize that somebody's trying to cross the street and will be willing to stop for them. So in addition to these designs, we also looked at reallocating the lane list. Uh, we wanted to Yes. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, let me try to do a better picture of it. So what a street bulb out is that... Okay. Yeah, you can go back. So what we're having with street bulb out, it's probably easier to look at it up in this top right corner. So if you'll notice that the sidewalk is the existing 10 or 12 feet here, and then right before the corner, it's actually going to jut out 7 feet. This normally would not be a parking space anyway due to a concern for car vehicles turning or for visibility. But what it's going to do is allow pedestrians to start seven feet out into the crosswalk. So instead of having to cross in behind a car, they're going to be standing out there with nothing in front of them, making it very easy for drivers to recognize them. Does that make sense? Yes. Not a problem. Actually, one other thing I should mention this, I'll get to it later, actually, the T and we're looking at changing the parking slightly, which we'll talk about in the Real King Lane list. So in Real Real King Lane list, Obviously on Hanover Street, we have a set face-to-face, building-face-to-building-face width. 
we're looking at reallocating the space to make it more efficient. First, the current sidewalk widths are about 10 to 11 feet. We're looking at bumping this out to 12 and a half feet. We feel that we can do this by first installing TNL parking pavement markings on the street for the on-street parking. Uh, as you saw in the previous photo, cars have a tendency to park one to two feet off the off the uh, curb. This inhibits the travel lane. So we feel about like guiding people on how close to the curb they should be parking. We're going to gain extra space. It's going to make the whole system more efficient. Uh, by doing that, we feel that we can bump in the travel lane slightly, thus giving us more space for the sidewalks and giving more uh, more space for the pedestrian experience. So in addition to the changes we're looking to make on Hanover Street, we're also looking at implementing new ways of finding additional resident parking. We did mention that we were looking to take parking away during the summer months, but we found other ways that we could give more parking to the residents throughout the year for very little cost and very easy changes. So the first thing we thought of is looking actually at the full carry playground right outside here. Currently there's a basketball court that's being used by children. It's used all day and into the early evening. At night, this court is not really utilized. So one of the things that we found is that you can take this, you can take this playground, add line striping, and make it overnight parking for residents. So from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., it would still be a playground for children to use. You still have your basketball courts. And then at 8 p.m., it switches over to residential parking. This will last until 8 a.m. <coughs> residents would have to vacate the area. We feel this is very bad. Beneficial for residents who, you know, work the eight to four type of job or work later, they can leave for work and then go at night and come back and park. So by doing this, uh, our idea was going from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So the kids, so the kids have to get out of the playground at 8 o'clock on a summer day, summer night. So another thing that we were looking at doing was is changing some of the on-street parking. Here we have one example. We're looking at Commercial Street as well as Fulton Street. Currently there is on parallel parking on both sides of the street here. These, these streets, this is actually a picture of Commercial Street with our idea implemented. These streets are very wide and are being underutilized. By implementing what we call reverse angled parking, we can gain an additional 28 spaces year round for all residents. Now, you're all probably familiar with standard angle parking where it's at a 45 degree angle and you pull into the space. This reverse angle parking is a similar approach except in this case, the driver is going to back into the spot. Now the advantage of this is that the first maneuver is going to be very similar to parallel parking. However, if you think about exiting the space, the problem with standard angle parking is when you're backing up, you're blindsided to who's coming on the traffic. If you think about this, you're pulling straight out, you have a perfect view of who's coming on, tra who, where the oncoming traffic is coming from, and you're, it's going to be much safer for all users, both the driver pulling out of the space as well as anybody on the street. So by utilizing this on Commercial and Fulton Street, we're looking at gaining 28 spaces year-round for everyone. And then our final design, consider our final preferred design for the parking, is we're looking to remove visitor parking from the on-street parking spaces in the north end. We feel that the lots and garages are very underutilized for the visitors. Visitors don't need to be driving into the north end and taking up those spaces, causing congestion, looking for that one spot they can find for a couple hours. There are several parking lots, as shown in here, that are easily accessible for visitors. They're just not, they just don't know where they are. So finding ways of recognizing those space, those uh, lots to use for visitors is a great way. Uh, this map shows the walking radius is to the parks, to the parking lots, excuse me. Here we have a three foot radius, a five foot radius, and a 10 foot radius. So as you can see here, there are seven or eight spaces, parking lots, just within a 10 minute walking radius of Hanover Street that visitors can easily use. By doing that, by eliminating the visitor parking, you're converting everything back to residential parking. It makes it more recognizable for everybody. Everybody understands what's going on. And you don't have the cars that are going around circling, which is causing congestion because they're double parking, they're looking for a space, and they're just continuing doing loops. Uh, the other parking design consideration that we're implement, or we would like to implement is uh, bicycle facilities. Right now, there are very few bicycle facilities in the North End. Uh, we're proposing putting places for parking or bicycle we're proposing 50, place, 50 spaces at uh, the intersection of Cross Street and Hanover Street, 20 spaces at the Polkari Playground, as well as 10 spaces up on Commercial Street, the corner of Commercial and Hanover Street. Uh, we feel that these bicycle racks can be utilized by both residents and visitors. Uh, we would encourage people to ride to the north end, park their bicycles at the head of Hanover Street, and walk down the street and experience what it has. We also want to make sure there's bicycle racks in the middle of the north end for the residents to utilize should they want to commute to work by bicycle, should they want to go out for a ride. They can park their bikes at the carry playground safely off the street. They can also park their bikes up at Commercial Street, corner of Commercial Hanover, where there is extra space up there. 
So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Matt Walsh. We'll the remarks. Thank you, Matt. Uh, briefly, in conclusion, I'd like to emphasize our pedestrian safety uh, and comfort approach. And uh, I believe that in building handicap accessible ramps at the crosswalks, uh, redefining the crosswalks that are existing today uh, so that they illuminate the pedestrians, utilizing them for the motorists, uh, and overall increasing the sidewalk space for the pedestrians, a large volume of pedestrians uh, that the North End experiences. Um, we believe this is, is crucial uh, to our design. And adapting to seasonal demands, as we mentioned, being able to phase this implementation of a sidewalk system in, uh, as you can see a matched image here uh, of one particular side of Hanover Street in sort of a test pilot uh, implementation, if you will. Uh, we really believe that this would be a successful way of implementing this design. So I think we'll, at this point, we'll start taking some questions. Uh,